Welcome to the No More Late Fees podcast. I'm Danielle. And I'm Jackie. And we're just two best friends and ex-Blockbuster employees rewatching some of the best and worst movies from the late 90s and early 2000s. This week, we are talking about the 2005 rom-com, The Wedding Date, one of my comfort movies. I love this movie so much. And this is my birthday episode, so I get to make the rules. Sure. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway. I, ju- I just want the audience to know she already makes the rules. It's no different than in That's any other. That's not true. That's not true. We did what a girl wants last week and I tried to get out of it several times. That, that, that has nothing to do with the rules as much <laughs> as it was a 20th anniversary and our wonderful guest picked it. This is true. Anyway. <laughs> we Before have we- equal, equal rule. <laughs> situations and i am very happy to celebrate your birthday your born day and shout out to miss terry for contributing to that (laughs) danielle got me a very 90s gift hold on let me go get it it's behind me she knows what i like and she also knows just buy me shit off my amazon wish list yeah so i I try not to stress i have to hold it close to me is that a science? No, that, that, no. Jesus Christ, why are you not showing up? There we, uh, it's a power line backpack. Thank you, Loungefly, for making this amazing backpack. Thank you, Danielle, for buying it off my wish list. I feel like Loungefly got a lot more love than I did, but that's fine. <laughs> well, I had already thanked you. You did. Thanked you twice. Anyway, before we dive into the movie, let's get into some How housekeeping. Wait a minute. I, I didn't. You, I, you... <laughs> I stopped because you weren't saying it. I was. You like paused. And yeah, because like, you were catching up. <laughs> it might be just the internet connection because I was ready. <laughs> let's do it again. But before we dive in, let's get into some housekeeping oh that was good see there is a delay <laughs> but... i felt that in my bones <laughs> <laughs> if you love the podcast and you want to support us here's a few ways you can so here's the skinny y'all we are on the socials and we're real close to getting to four thousand followers on instagram and two thousand followers on twitter And that might not seem like a lot to you, but to us, that's a lot. And we would love your help. So if you're not following us on Instagram or Twitter, please, please, please pause, go over to the socials at No More Late Fees, and please follow us. We would really appreciate it. That's our PSA. (laughs) (laughs) And if you follow us and you like what you hear, And you want to maybe just support us in some way, buy us a virtual cup of coffee, if you will, head on over to ko-fi.com slash no more late fees. Please and thank you. And lastly, we have merch. If you like listening to the podcast in the shower, per se, we got a shower curtain. We do. It, It goes with your entire bathroom decor you know it does who doesn't and you know want... who you are yeah because <laughs> <laughs> we do know that there are listeners who listen in the shower so they do. and have full on conversations with us and then their <laughs> husband thinks i'm just sitting on the toilet talking to them while they're in the shower you know who you are you know who you are <laughs> so why don't you tell us about the movie <sighs> The wonder that is the wedding date. (laughs) With the wedding of her younger sister, played by Amy Adams, fast approaching, Cat Alice, played by Deborah Messing, faces the undesirable prospect of traveling alone to London for the ceremony. While this is bad enough, Jeffrey, the man who left her as they move closer to marriage, happens to be the groom's best man. Determined to show everyone, most of all Jeffrey, 
that her romantic life is as full and thrilling as ever, Kat hires a charming male escort as her date. It stars Deborah Messing, Dermot Mulroney, Amy Adams, Peter Egan, and Holland Taylor. It was directed by Claire Kilner, written by Dana Fox, based on the book Asking for Trouble by Elizabeth Young. Did not realize that until reading the fun facts, because I obviously don't look at credits, but it is now in my Audible to listen to. (laughs) And you can currently watch it on Prime, Hulu, and Roku. But before we start, let's get into our ratings rewind. So you know the drill. Before we get into the movie, we'll reveal the rating our Y2K selves would give. And then at the end, we'll see if our current selves agree with our initial rating. Our scale consists of would buy it, would buy it again. The best would play on repeat. Five day rental. Would watch again. Two day rental. Okay, but nothing to write home about. And same day rental. Trash. Just like Jeffrey, it's straight up trash. (laughs) The worst. But is he the only villain? Oh no, Amy's up there too. She can go in the trash with Jeffrey. Garbage humans, I tell ya. Well, birthday girl, what is your Y2K rating? I love this movie. I own it. I, yeah. It's would buy for me. So you do have it on DVD. I I mean, I did until I sold all my DVDs. I don't know. What made you do this? Same for me. You know, I love a good rom-com and male escorts. Yes. Don't S- Dermot Mulroney. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so I, I do own this. If you listen to our What a Girl Wants episode, you'll know why I didn't get to watch it on DVD with the commentary. I got to fix my DVD player situation. It's such an easy task. (laughs) I don't know what to say. Tell us about the box office. Right, right. Let's look at those numbers. So this movie, it was a hit. I mean, it had a budget of $15 million and it made $47.2 million. I do want to give props to the fact that this movie is written and directed by women. So thumbs up for that. Although I will give you a heads up that I will have, I have lots of freaking questions about this movie. Oh, I got answers for you. I hope you do. I do. One one question. So this movie takes place in England, right? Mm-hmm. It starts off in New York because that's where Kat lives. And But she grew up in England. Mm-hmm. She also lets us know that her mother had her from, I guess, a previous relationship. And then her mother got remarried. She was very young when her mom and her stepdad got remarried. And so she considers her stepdad her dad. He is mm-hmm. British. Her mother is is American. And her sister and her grew up in England. Yet, Kat has no accent. And mind you, she grew up there, I'm assuming. She grew up there from when she was young. And so did her sister. Her sister was born there. And they I don't found- think she was born there. I also want to say that Ken asked this as well last night. So I have a feeling a lot of your questions I have already answered <laughs> last night. So I believe her stepdad said that Kat was like 10 when he met her in New York mm-hmm. is where he met her and her mom. They got married. It I There is not a timeline of how much younger Amy is than her and when they moved to England. So I agree it is sus that amy does not have an accent it's super sus and okay so there's a 10 year age gap if that's how old he was are you sure it was 10 i'm pretty sure it was 10 i thought it was younger but he met her at 10 so let's say they they got married had maybe like a year or two so there is literally maybe 11 12 year age gap and the jealousy that cat sister has for her Seems more of like a sister that are that's are, that are closer in age. Yeah, because like I could understand her being in her shadow the whole time. Mm-hmm. If you know, 
but it, it's just weird. Like the math's not mathing on that one. I agree. The the timelines are fuzzy on that. And then they do talk about fighting over Tommy P pants. Right. But that wasn't clear if it was in England or in London. Um, yeah. But then like definitely by the time Cat was in I'm, high school. Yeah, because sees Woody in a bar. Right. And that's in London. And, and learned, so. we learned that she was like popular and everything mm-hmm. like that. And again, the way that her sister like kind of talks about it is almost as if she was there. And Serena and I are 15 years apart and she like doesn't remember that kind of stuff. Like only if yeah. we had told her and even still, mm-hmm. it's just, yeah. So s- math's not math thing. So yeah. I was very confused. Why don't they have British accents? Because it seems like, they grew up together with mm-hmm. their cousin and everything. And also, what what's that man's name? Cat Jeffrey or Edward? Edward was their next door neighbor. Mm-hmm. So like, it felt like he was their next door neighbor growing up. And also, he does he does not look much younger than Cat. And he's also best friends with the guy that Cat dated. So you would have to think that the two of them were the same age. So again, not adding up. Those are my uh, questions. Okay. Or for statements. Now, for now, are you, do you have more? I'll have more later. Okay. okay. <laughs> Just checking. So let's dive in. Leave me breathless. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Oh, there's a lot of music in this that I will probably be singing. <laughs> this soundtrack is really good. Yeah, it has a really good soundtrack. So we see the opening is is Kat's invite to Amy, her little sister's wedding. And then we see her getting ready to head to the airport. And while she's getting ready, it's a message that's playing on her answering machine. It's Nick Mercer reassuring her that everything's going to be fine. He's done this before well we find out not for a wedding but essentially he's been an escort for a while he knows how to kind of play the game and schmooze people and make them believe that they're in a relationship she found him through an article she cashed in some of her 401k to pay him the six thousand dollars to attend this wedding with her absolutely not and this is where the movie would end for me (laughs) because one six thousand dollars okay and two, my 401k. <laughs> there ain't no way. And first of all, she had enough time to be working on finding some hot dude to go with her or something. She works at the damn airport. So, yeah, I will say cat, very high anxiety. And then she, as Nick calls her out on in later on in the movie, she want she wants everyone to have a certain impression of her. She she's working so hard to impress everyone else when she should be trying to make herself happy. Essentially, it's weird that she has, and I'm I'm curious if her personality was always like this, or is this her trauma response of her fiance of years leaving her without an answer? Because I would feel like. Her personality would be switched with her sisters a little bit of just like her just being popular and all this, Mm -hmm. you know, carefree dumping boys here and there. So I don't know. I was, she is very type A. She is. And I, I, I feel like it was probably maybe she's always had it, but then like when the thing with Jeffrey happened, when he called off their engagement, it just like shot everything through the roof because her mom is she's a pill yeah her her mom is very critical very blunt in how she she says things the amazing holland taylor can do no wrong but i mean she's kind of a bitch in this movie (laughs) yeah you know what it it's funny because she is very critical of cat and but i'm sure she's critical of amy and and, but she probably compares amy to cat yes because when we get to the scene where they are, when they're having the reception before like the wedding and whatnot, she starts her speech talking about how Kat's ex fiance left her. I would be so mad if it was my day and my mom is talking about my sister getting yes. left and how we thought Kat was going to get me. Like, 
somehow it became about Kat instead but, of Amy. Uh, but at the same time, so she's she's doing things that are triggering Amy by te- like taking this special day for Amy and then making it about Kat. But then the thing she's talking about Kat is like, oh, we thought we'd marry her off first and then she was engaged and then it was called off. And so like she's triggering both of her daughters in this speech at the exact same time. I blame the daddy. He's the sweetest soul. He's the sweetest little pushover man sitting in the corner. He, first of all, I don't, like Kat said, who gave this woman a mic? Yeah. Right. And he should have been up there with her. Like if you notice Edward's parents both are up there. He should have been up there to wrangle her because he knows that she goes off the cuss. He knows it. He yeah. ain't dumb. Yeah. But rewinding, Kat okay. is, you know, very nervous about. Yes. Nick. Nick sends a messenger to pick up the money and the, or the plane ticket. And like Kat is literally telling the messenger, the bike messenger, like, you're going to have to help me because she's got such a like a vice grip on this envelope. And he has to like literally peel her fingers off of it so he can deliver it to Nick. Yes, there are black people in this movie and they are only filler in the background. They have there are two lines given to the black people in this movie. Yes. She does have like her her memories box that she opens while she's getting ready and has pictures of her and Jeffrey and the engagement ring. So she's kind of thinking about that, has that in the back of her mind as she's kind of setting up this facade of a relationship with Nick. My next question. Mm -hmm. So she has this this beautiful luggage set. It's like it's not completely tiffany blue it's a little bit lighter yes and it's all matching first of all cat you're only going for like less than a week how much luggage you know do you need she she has like at least five suitcases and i'm not talking about small ones like huge suitcases secondly i just looked at that and the whole time i'm like yes it looks pretty but i it, it looks like a material that would get so dirty yes so dirty so quickly i i did i had all of those same exact (laughs) thoughts but i do know like because she's so type a and she's trying so hard to make her the best impression she probably packed her whole fucking wardrobe (laughs) just to have options because we do see that just in her choosing a dress to go to that reception or reception yeah. yeah welcoming party yeah I guess it is she does a really cute thing which I love because it's so we do it all the time and it's not typically captured on film is like she she's running around getting everything ready and then she's like in her kitchen and she kind of does like this little spinny around like what the fuck did I come in here for (laughs) and then like runs back off screen so I Deborah Messing's comedic timing is just impeccable. I've always really loved her. Yeah. And even in Will and Grace, she's always been just a fantastic comedic actress. And so in this is no exception. I was actually really surprised because, I, you know, like I said, the box of office numbers did really well for this movie. It wasn't it wasn't a bad movie. It did mm-hmm. well. I am surprised that she was not in more rom-coms. I feel the same way about Jennifer Garner. Like, how did they drop the back? Like, I don't know if they didn't want to be typecast or something because it just, it doesn't make any sense to me. They, like you said, she has such great comedic timing. I've seen Mm -hmm. her in other movies where it's like an ensemble, but I was like, she proved that she could, you know, do well as a lead so why wasn't she in more of these movies i agree yeah i i don't know if it was like a personal choice on her behalf or maybe because she's not like a conventional beauty that like the rom-com roles were typically going to the kate hudson's yes i mean roberts and stuff like that i think she's pretty enough i she's i think she's beautiful like 
She's a white lady. What? what? <laughs> I don't but know. She's what... the redhead. Oh, here we the go. The lowest step in the the hair color hierarchy <laughs> of colorism in white women or I can't. white casts. <laughs> Amy Adams had a ton of movies. You know what it is also, I think if we think about it, the 90s and 2000s, when we look at things now, we can see the fluidity of people going from TV to movies, no problem. Mm -hmm. Like it's not a big deal. But back then it was very difficult to be able to transition from if you were a TV actress to be in movies. And if you were in a movie, if you were a movie actor, it was like suicide to go and do television. Mm-hmm. So she was at the height of Will and Grace and she was known as a television actress. So I can imagine maybe that's why, because once Katherine Heigl started to get into movies, like she really didn't like she, she left Grey's Anatomy and she was like, I am a movie actress. Yeah. And Jennifer Aniston got so many chances in the beginning she was like dipping her toes in a, a bunch of those rom-coms and, and and eventually she was able to transition but like it took her a while it did and and she was she had been in like the object of my affection and office space but then it, she had to go very indie and office space was indie but it was like an indie comedy but she had to go like the good girl friends with money yeah friends with money like kind of real drama driven indies before finding her footing uh uh can you hear the cat yeah but it's it's okay Okay. not not too Um, bad and then it was the breakup that really kind of launched her actually I think I would have to say it was along came Polly that was Um, the one that probably helped her shift because I think that one came out first and that did well I think it did pretty well too yeah, I always. It's ben Stiller, I know so Ben Stiller blind. Your blind spot. It's all it right. It is a blind spot. <laughs> so now we are at the airport. The way, because she's pushing this car with all of her luggage on it, and the way she's pivoting around, like the the line, the ropes in the line. <laughs> oh, it, it's so good. Like she's like doing this little side shuffle and. If you notice, she only ever wears kitten heels or flats in the movie. And I think it's just because she's so tall yeah, that they didn't want her towering over people. So in her little kitten heels and her little coat shuffling around this queue. It gave me so much anxiety. I was like, bitch, first of all, you work for this airline. At the same time as this is happening, the guy... One of the guys that works for her is like asking her a bunch of questions because like she's so good at her job and trying to fix things. She says she only has 15 minutes before the plane leaves. Yeah. So I'm like, why are are you getting on the plane? I would have told him, dude, get this on the plane, you know, and go over. I don't know, but I know it was supposed to be a comedic thing, but I was more aggravated than that. Well, and this is, I guess, again, illustrating how much of a people pleaser she is because Mm. now she's working off the clock. She's on the phone with a guy and like sympathizing with him and like ends up after getting a dirty look from her boss, like refunding him his flight, the cost of his flight and gifting him like 10,000 frequent flyer miles, like doing all of these things over and above, like what honestly she should be doing so again virgin atlantic chokehold on the 2000s and i was like trying to think of other instances where i had seen virgin atlantic and it's fucking friends every time they're at the airport it's a virgin atlantic flight and so like i'm like anytime anyone's going international here richard branson is like you want some money (laughs) for some (laughs) product placement yes please so now she's on the flight. She's super nervous. She gets up and is like kind of pacing, has her little water, and she's talking to you, the steward the steward. And she's like, I'm not a white knuckler. I fly all the time. I just have this guy I'm paying essentially to be my boyfriend to impress my family. Question again. If she was 15 minutes till her flight and she did all that stuff. And Nick was still coming in after her. 
How late was he? Well, in the flight, like there were still a ton of people boarding. Yeah. So maybe it was like 15 minutes before they started boarding, not oh. actually 15 minutes till the fight took off. I don't know. Her personality doesn't seem like she's a type to be not be there an hour ahead or two hours ahead. So I know we're overthinking about it, yeah. but like, <laughs> I'm just like the bath, the bath thing. But Nick, yeah. she does get to, to meet Nick and the Hello, way 3B. <laughs> The way that she like looks at this man is hilarious. And he's very calming mm-hmm. to her. And I think I felt triggered because it felt patronizing, but it's because I have dated people who have done this to me because I don't believe I am to be type A, but I may be wrong. I'm not type A, but maybe I have a lot of anxiety. Yeah. I wouldn't classify you as type A. It's like you have type A tendencies with like a type <laughs> C execution. What's type C? And it, like when I feel like it. <laughs> well, yeah. On my time. Yeah. <laughs> Like, we always got a lot of plans. And it it doesn't help that we both kind of have that same (laughs) attitude towards life. Like, oh, yeah, we're going to do all this shit. Let's let's, uh, let's pin it down on the calendar, though. (laughs) Yeah. If it it just feels too constricting, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, it, it felt it felt patronizing for sure. Like. I think he was just, he knew how, how high the stakes were in her head Mm -hmm. and kind of was reassuring. Plus that's his job to just make people feel comfortable. Right. And give the air of, of being in this loving relationship and they had just met. So it was probably just like, Hey, like we're going to get through this. Well, I'll take care of you type thing. And then she wakes up because they've landed. (laughs) And girl is a mess. Like she had been sleeping with her mouth open. Looked like she had a little drool on her face. Her hair's a mess. And like she turns around and looks at Nick, who is like still perfectly quaffed. <laughs> and she's like trying to like do her best with her her pocket mirror, fix this shit up. Apparently, then- she wanted to leave earlier. And Nick does address that. Like I know you wanted to get there earlier, and yeah. So they're getting there with not a lot of time in, uh, you know, in between to go to this reception thing. Yeah. The welcome party. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, she walks out of the airport and she has changed. Yeah. And then she's very upset because his tie matches her dress. Exactly. Ken and I love a matching outfit, like matching, matching as much as we can matching. So I didn't see an issue with this. But she thinks, in her mind, people are going to think that they were trying too hard because of the matchy-matchy. Yeah, but I think you probably don't care right? because you don't care if people are, like, you're not going with the intention of thinking what other people are going to think. Yeah. She was just too much in her head about it because she thought people will know her little secret. Yes. So then they pull over at a pub because she has to change. If he's not going to change his tie, she's going to change her dress. And I like that he was like, nah, bitch, I ain't changing. This is what I'm wearing. Yeah. He probably only brought two ties. Yeah. So they're at a pub. She's coming out in all these different outfits. So she stands on paper towels in the stall. Like that. But But then then she doesn't wear them outside. I saw that too. (laughs) Ken clocked that and made me rewind it. <laughs> like, what's the point? Yeah, there. I mean, okay, it's still gross. It, yeah. I don't. I'm not excusing any of this. Like, I when she when I looked down, I was like, damn, she ain't wearing no shoes. Yeah. 
And they were kitten heel slides, like very easy to slip on to walk out. It's not like lace up combat boots or anything. Right. So then she tries on several dresses. And if you notice the dresses she first tries on because she's in, in my perspective, the dresses she first tries on, like they have little cap sleeves or little shawls on them. They're more classic, like I would call like garden tea party. And then the more the movie progresses, the more sexy her dresses become. And I think it's because she becomes more confident Agree. with Nick and herself. You know, she starts to let go of stuff. Yeah. Um, Nick makes her feel calm. I do want to note that Amy Adams, we meet her at the welcome party. And I, f- I figured I, I better say it right or you would correct me again. So the wedding well, because then there's a reception the, later right the there's welcome a lot of activities <laughs> this weekend the welcome party so amy adams colored her hair blonde and the whole time i was watching this movie i was like why the fuck is her hair blonde mm-hmm. she's a redhead and deborah messing is a redhead so why not have two redheads who look like sisters and then i remembered the white people diversity problem yep they can't have two redheads. They can't. <laughs> Weird. Yes. So now we're at the welcome party. They kind of. No, you... their... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Happened? I nothing. They somehow they've taken a cab ride, not only to the pub, but then to the welcome party. And it's not till they get to coat check that they discuss like right how, where they've met, like how they met, like what he does for a living, all of like that basic shit that everyone's going to ask. That doesn't fit her type A personality. Yeah. I would have expected her to type up like <laughs> everything and yes. had it like in a like nice folder and had given it to him and he, I could have seen him go like, you know what? I read through all this, but we're going to play it by ear kind of thing. Yeah. But that was yeah. weird. So he he does say that if they are to get intimate, that they would discuss pricing beforehand. And then she says, I find it morally repugnant. So already she's like, bitch. I'm judging you for what you do, even though I've hired you to do this for me. Right. And then she apologizes and he's like, stop saying you're sorry. Like, like if you have a stance, just stand on it. Like, don't say it and then apologize. Right. So then she runs into her mom and her mom is very upset because she has left no margin for jet lag. So she needs to hydrate and like hands her some water. Okay. And, and she looks gorgeous. She chooses this red gown and her hair is all swept up. She looks great. And her mom's still finding something. The something to, to pick at. Okay. <laughs> so her mom is also then going over the list of activities for the weekend. And it's like the weekend is jam packed. Right. Start to finish, jam-packed, full of activities. Someone does ask where she finds him, and she says, or no, dad asks, where did you find the, him? And she says, the yellow pages. So not entirely oh. lying, just a little thin. <laughs> and for you young people, there used to be a book that used to be dropped off at our houses that had everybody's phone number in it and their names. And they were called... The yellow pages. Then we get to mom's speech, which we talked about earlier. Jeffrey interrupts by playing the piano. Right. Which you could tell he's probably learned a long time ago how to to mitigate these situations that would happen mm-hmm. with her mom. Also, we do meet Amy before, I think, the speeches. And you could tell she's like n- looking Nick up and down. Mm-hmm. You know, not the look of I'm so excited for my sister kind of situation 
almost like mentally comparing him to Edward or something. I don't know what she was like thinking, but yeah. Well, because it seems like everything in her life with Kat has always been a competition in her head. Which is so sad. Yeah. So then Kat goes over, is talking to Jeffrey, gives him a hug. And then TJ shows up, who is my favorite character in the whole movie. TJ (laughs) is the loud, brash, outspoken cousin who just like walks up to them talking, turns around and says, oh, hello, asshole. (laughs) And then like steals Kat away and says, I'm saving you from yourself. Right. Because TJ knows. Yeah. TJ does not buy any of the bullshit. TJ knows a lot. Yes. She then proceeds to call Nick Mr. Timey Up, Mr. Timey Down. And then when he looks over at Kat, she says, I think I've just come. (laughs) (laughs) She does make a statement about his buns as well, which I like. And then they go to the bar and this is when we meet Amy. And... This is like the perfect depiction of how their relationship is. So Nick orders them both drinks and be, and as Amy is watching. And as soon as she sees it, instead of just saying, can I have a drink too, or Mm -hmm. ordering a drink, she says to her sister, I want that, which is her drink. And she gives it to her sister. And not only does she want her to give it to her, she wants her to put it right, place it right in front of her so that (laughs) <laughs> she could drink she has a straw in her mouth it's just so entitled and bratty and disgusting and she does cat makes a statement about how she's ex- she must be excited about her wedding because it's an excuse that finally the whole world would revolve around her and her her sister's like exactly yeah so much like my disdain for ben stiller stems from heavyweights yeah I do not care for Amy Adams oh, because of her betrayal of Amy in this movie. Yeah, and there are some movies where her voice is just like, her voice in this movie was very Giselle and Enchanted. Yes. And I was like, why is she using this voice? Because she doesn't normally use it in other mm-hmm. movies. Like, I just, you know, Giselle, it fit. But for this one, but I guess it fit with, what she was trying to portray I I just it kept taking me out because I was like Giselle (laughs) (laughs) I I kept (laughs) expecting her to break out into song because of it Um, but also sorry the fact that she didn't have an accent but she was talking her accent was almost like an old timey like 1920s situation going on there and it reminded me of her role in Mrs. Pettigrew. Lives for a day. Yeah. Which I love that movie, by the way. I've never seen it. Miss Now. You wouldn't like it anyway, so I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. And then Edward walks up, says how lucky, he's one lucky bastard, gets to marry this woman. And then she's chiding him for not taking da- dance lessons until two days before the wedding. To which Nick replies, well, we'll go with you. And so now they have like a double date at the dance studio. Can't wait till we talk about that scene. It's so fucking good. We have different thoughts. Oh, okay. (laughs) So they go back to the house after the welcome party. Well, Uh, there's a really important part mm -hmm. before we get back to the house. So Nick is outside and Nick walks outside and Jeffrey is outside smoking. And so they start making small talk. Then Jeffrey turns around and looks inside and it's Kat and Amy and Edward at the bar. And Jeffrey says, there's this girl I care for. You could say I love her. She's here with some other guy. And up until last night, mostly because I like listen to the movie while I'm multitasking, but I actually sat and watched the movie. I'm like, oh, we spoiler alert. We find out like he's in love with Amy, but Nick at this time takes it to mean that he's still in love with Kat. Which I don't understand because he is the other guy. So why would he, for him to say this statement, for it to be true, to match that he's talking about Kat, that means the other guy that Kat is with, 
he would have to, he would have had to see the other guy, which is this guy, which is Nick. So why would he tell Nick? Maybe to a, make him jealous. How would it make him jealous? Nick has the girl. There's nothing to be jealous about. It was just, it was weird. And the vibes in which they were talking didn't yeah. feel like that macho kind of mm-hmm. vibrato. So that should have been the first clue that he is not talking about Ken. Context clue be- clues people. <laughs> So now we go back to the parents' house. They've always been strict about when boys stay at the house. (laughs) But mom has thrown all worries out the window and is like, oh, no, Nick's staying in your room with you. Typical rom-com trope. You have to put them in a situation where they have to sleep in the same bed or it's not going to work. He sees a poster of air supply in her room. And then she is... Oh, she's cleaning her makeup off or taking her makeup off and she's standing on her tiptoes. And so he says, are you standing on your tiptoes because of your years of ballet or because you're always walking on eggshells? <laughs> and and she replies, trigger. I never took ballet and like slams the door. <laughs> And then he is in the shower singing All Out of Love by Air Supply. And he is, so there are two types of bathroom people. There are people who close the door and like their privacy, no matter what they're doing in there. And then there are the type who live in a naked house and have the door wide open, even when showering. Nick is from a naked house. (laughs) Kat is not. Yes. And so, like, he needs a shampoo, so she's trying to, like, avert her eyes and get him the shampoo. Oh, I paid for it. I, I mean, <laughs> I might not have, I'm not, I haven't paid to, like, touch the merchandise, but I paid to look at it. And <laughs> I would have just pulled the shower curtain back and just said, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> and I would have at least a good few minutes. <laughs> So she does sit on the toilet and she's kind of asking him about his upbringing. He tells this story about how his mom was like a prostitute and washed her stockings in his bath water. And then he's like, I'm just stripper. She was a stripper. Oh, sorry. She was a stripper. And then he's like, sorry, I'm just fucking with you. But then he gets out of the shower and because she's sitting on the toilet, like her face is at dick level and she just, there are no words. She tries to make words. They don't come out. I'm keeping my mouth shut. So he, during this conversation as well, he talks about how every woman has the exact love life she wants. And that when she's ready to let go, she will. And be able to to find love again, essentially. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever so now it's bedtime she builds a pillow wall in between the two of them she's being so fucking extra with this shit like like come on lady we know it goes down in the dms you know like <laughs> stop pretending and now we're at the next day i'm gonna fuck up a sport thing I think they're playing cricket. They're playing cricket. Okay. I thought cricket had the flat bat, the flat paddles, though. I don't know. They're not playing baseball. So, well, I know that. Hold on. Let me ask Google. Anyway, one fine day is playing. So I know exactly what song is playing, but I just don't know (laughs) exactly. It's baseball cricket esque short bat. I mean, it's a weird way to play baseball, but I don't know. I I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know either. Yeah, because the cricket bats are flat. Oh, we're going to get... We're going to get shit. Who cares? Anybody who's (laughs) watching this movie, they're playing a a, a sport game (laughs) where there's a little tiny baby bat, (laughs) they hit a ball, and they run around some bases. I don't know. 
<laughs> and the way he pitched it too wasn't like a baseball pitch either. It was more of an underhand. Yeah. Which is cricket, cricket pitch. Yeah. I don't know. It just had a weird bat. They were out um, in the field doing shit. So, but then she, she, now she has it in her head that Jeffrey is is realizing he made a terrible mistake. I get secondhand embarrassment a lot in movies, so much so that sometimes I have to fast forward. And because I've seen this movie so many times, I had to fast forward this because I said, girl, you just, you just look at a hot mess. Okay. She She drinks water and dribbles it down her front of her white shirt and then unbuttons (laughs) the bottom and ties it up. So it's a little crop top. And then when it's her turn to swing, she sticks her ass out real far and kind of wiggles it around. You ain't doing nothing, girl. (laughs) (laughs) That man don't Uh, care. And even Nick is looking at her from out, like he's at one of the bases, just like side eyeing. What's she doing? And then when it's Nick, well, actually, Nick is not at the bases yet. It Nick comes up and he's it's his turn to swing. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I think Nick swung first. No, no, it was after. After she strikes out. She tells him to up. lose. Mm-hmm. And she says, lose the game. Which I don't know why, because the whole goal is to make Jeffrey feel like a competitive macho dude. And he's mm-hmm. not going to find Nick to be any kind of threat if he if he loses. Yeah. But luckily, Nick just ignores our ass and hits. I don't know what a home run is in cricket. Scores the winning goal unit. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a home run because they're they're able to get it and whatnot. So, yeah. So Jeffrey throws a big bitch baby tantrum because his team lost. And then that's the end of that scene. <laughs> and we're back at Kat's parents' house. And dad is washing his boat. But the way he takes this bucket of soapy water and splashes it on the boat, but he's only like two feet from the boat. So it immediately (laughs) tidal waves back at him. It's so fucking I feel like the actor did that not realizing it was going to happen because like he looks surprised when it happens. I (laughs) agree. So then they need to get ready because it's the hen party, which is... It's a bachelor bachelor parties in in England. That's what they call them. Yeah. And it's golf themed. So she has... Kat has her little like knee-high golf socks and a short skirt. Whitest white people shit I ever seen. (laughs) I wish I would go to a black wedding and say, we're going to a bachelor party and the theme is golf. (laughs) Funny enough, I have been oh, to a golf themed bachelorette party. Why? Did they play golf? Like, was this their passion? Were they marrying Tiger Woods? Like, I need an no. explanation. No, it was literally we just dressed up and then we drank. But Very why? similar to this movie. <laughs> I don't have a reason. You're friends with this person. what was the reason i don't know (laughs) out of all the themes i don't get it i don't understand i had to find i had to find a fucking golf skirt you know how hard that shit is when you're not like 16 (laughs) it's not hard here in florida to find golf clothes i just would refuse to want to wear it (laughs) (laughs) the only way that i would be okay with a golf themed bachelorette party is if a bitch got a golf cart that's it no one's giving you a golf cart danielle they see me rolling (laughs) 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 so we and dad gives Nick, Nick the keys to the car so Nick is driving Kat to the the bar to the hen party and it's weird because like it's a pub but they have to crawl through like a little door to get I I was confused by that I don't know what that door is is it a speakeasy like is this a separate 
room. But Danielle, aren't speakeasies because of prohibition, which happened in America and not the U.S.? I'm <laughs> trying to make it London? make sense. Why was there that little door? I don't. I don't have any. Maybe that's for the you. children's bar. <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> Maybe it's like a cart pass through. I if you're if you're listening <laughs> from the UK and you know there's a legitimate reason and you're just laughing at us because we're dumb, please <laughs> let, let us, us know. know. <laughs> we're very interested. So they her and Nick have like this oh. very sexy exchange, which is Jackie's picture. Go ahead, Jackie. Oh, so she's kind of like, because he's like, don't worry. Like, I I know how to say all the right things, may, like convince people essentially that mm-hmm. we're together. Don't worry about it. And she's like, prove it to me. Show me, which seems very out of context. And, and Ken was even like, was there a deleted scene where we got from like the cricket game to this? Like, what happened for her to all of a sudden be like, being sexy for Jeffrey and then like asking Nick to show her. So he, he tells her, he leans her up against the car, tells her to close her eyes. And then like, I'm not going to kiss you, but you need to understand that you're a powerful woman and any guy would be lucky to have you. And then at the end of this thing, like she can't even stand up right away. Like her knees were weak. (laughs) And I'm sitting there like, this, this is corny, but <laughs> I, I love it. I would have been fine. Like she needed this. I just needed the dick. I mean, the dick in my face scene <laughs> would have been enough for me, but we're all different people. <laughs> so, and during the scene, she says, wow, you're worth every penny. So solidifies that, her decision. That line should have been in the bathroom scene. As soon as she spotted it, or as soon as it was in her face, that's what I would have said. <laughs> Worth every cent. Worth every penny. <laughs> so now they now they're in the bar. But he comes, so she's at the hen party and he comes in because she left her purse. She was so digmatized by his words. And he comes in and the way that the women in this bar flock to him and not just flock to him are legit touching her man. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, I know she paid for it, but like people were sniffing him and shit. It was, it was getting wild in there. It's like, don't you have attractive men in England? Like, is this the first one? (laughs) I've, I've never been, so I don't know. So we have, he does bring her her purse and then TJ tells Nick to stay for a shot and he's like, no, I'm going to go with the dudes. And as he's leaving, Kat gets the courage to go over and, and full on make out with him in the bar. There is one point where you could tell, like, as she's making out with him, she closes her eyes, but Nick, like, opens his and just is staring at her. But it's not like, bitch, what are you doing? It's more like, I like this. Yeah. I like it a lot. Yeah. Absolutely. And then he does go to the bachelor party with Jeffrey and Ed. And Ed is just, he's like a little Labrador. He's so, a golden retriever energy he yes. has. And he's just so happy. But like Jeffrey is annoyed when they see Nick show up. And he's annoyed with Ed for inviting him. And he's like, why not? You know? Yeah. And they have some tawdry strippers. But I'm annoyed by the strippers. You know why I'm, I, I was annoyed by the strippers? Why? Because they were wearing button-up shirts and they were so wrinkly. <laughs> I was so turned off. <laughs> you, you had no boner for these strippers? No. <laughs> they, I, they they lost me at a wrinkled shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there's so many other things you could have wore. Yeah. I, I mean, it was like weird Catholic school girl outfits, but not. not they weren't. 
They weren't the like they weren't given A-team Britney Spears strippers. No, they were kind of like B or C squad. We need candy from the best man. You know yes. those vibes. I was even like, okay, Regina, <laughs> <laughs> let me get my dollars ready, but not so, these girls. So now we have we're back at the hen party. TJ at one point is sad because she's by herself and she goes, would someone please buy my hoo-ha a drink? <laughs> With the one-liners, TJ. Love and she, she, you see her literally just lighting cigarette after cigarette. She'll light a cigarette and put it out and get another one just to have Woody the bartender light it again for her. I, I literally wrote cigarette cigarette flirting. <laughs> It was all new to me. Never seen it before. So Kat walks up, sees this, and then realizes she recognizes Woody. So she's like, Woody? And at the same time, much like our very impeccably timed housekeeping, (laughs) they say, not yet, but it's getting there, I guess was what they used to say back in the day. So they're kind of reminiscing. But then Amy bebops over. And is like, oh, did you know Kat broke up with you because of your funky breath? And he's just like. I I do have to say, regardless of how much I don't like Amy, it is very much a young, younger sister energy to, to, to do that shit, but more like when you were young, not like as adults. Yeah. Hating ass Amy. Hating ass Amy. Side eye. Fuck you, Amy. So, but then she feels remorseful, like after she sees that she's hurt Kat's feelings by saying this really hurtful thing to the bartender. And she starts getting like weepy. And then she says, you may be my half sister, but I whole love you. I had like she refers to Kat as her half sister a lot. They grew yeah. up together. I have never in my whole life called any of my siblings half. Yeah. They're Ever. Just your siblings. Yeah. There's no need for all that. Weird. I agree. So then she starts rambling on in her drunken state about how she's not sure she can do this and she shouldn't be allowed to get married. But then needle drop new song on the the uh, comes on overhead and she's distracted because this is her song and she needs to dance and so cat's like what the what are what was that all about right and so then the next scene we see them in the limo mm -hmm. and they're just white girl wasted out you know do what you do during a bachelorette parties standing up in the limo and what's that window called sunroof right but they have to make a stop because somebody's got penis on the mind cat has an idea and so she got to go to the atm the amount of cards that she had to use to get the money well premeditated well it was premeditated but also i'm sure like the atm had limits so it wasn't like i'm sure she was maxing out some of those cards and she had to dip into her 401k but also the limits probably had to use a bunch of different cards just to get the amount she approximated in her head and find out she's three she's three hundred dollars short yes so she goes home oh tj just stumbles out of the limo while Kat's getting money and TJ's just walking home now. She has a champagne bottle in her hand <laughs> and she's just like sauntering down the the sidewalk and she's like top night ladies <laughs> top night. When and that I scene happened <laughs> when that happened I said I know Jackie's gonna say this line during this episode. <laughs> top night ladies. And when she goes back home and she gets she goes to her room and she just like saunters over to Nick 
and then takes him out of the bed and takes him to the boat. But the way, like, she has all the confidence, she, like, all of her anxiety wall, like, all that stuff is gone. When I tell you the chokehold that that Maroon 5 CD had on me, that this song that plays during the scene, chef's kiss. And it's, it's, the name of the song is Secret, so it's all, like sexy and secret and they're in the boat and not even in the parents house and she just she takes the bra off the panties are falling and she gets it on the next morning there this is Question. always weird because she kind of she to me it seems like she doesn't remember any of it she was that drunk like she blacked out and I don't know if he's like offended. So he says that nothing happened and she knows obviously something happened because she woke up naked in the boat. Also, ladies, most of the time, I believe we know if we've been penetrated. Yeah. Just saying. Agreed. And I don't believe there was a condom. Ken did. He's like, how does she know he doesn't have STDs? He's an escort. I'm like, I could only assume he's like regularly tested because it's his career path. <laughs> not entirely sure. Though. Not 100% on that. And then, oh, and the best part is when they wake up in the morning and, well, Nick wakes up in the morning and is like what, climbing out of the boat to go back in the house. Or, no, no. It's when Kat, when Kat is getting out of the boat to go back in the house, her dad's standing outside and he just goes, ahoy there. No, he's inside and when nick comes downstairs i guess when nick brought her like coffee and stuff and she sees her bag full of money and she tries to hide that and she's like i don't remember anything and nick does like i think nick felt like that was the most real she's ever been they had such a mm -hmm. moment and it was so intimate and like i think at this point he's fallen in love with her and for her not to remember is just like gut-wrenching yeah. And I think he also probably is like, you're fucking lying. Yeah. And so he tells her that he doesn't see anything, but then he sees the money and he, he like calls her out on that. And he's like, and you're $300 short. But my favorite part is like, this whole scene is tension, but like he goes downstairs to eat breakfast and the dad is like, are you a boat man, Nick? And he's like, I am now. That cracked me up. And well, and then he says, glad someone is making use of her at last. <laughs> boat, I mean. And she comes down in this beautiful mint colored dress. Mm -hmm. She has, as uh, Aretha Franklin would say, wonderful gowns. <laughs> wonderful <laughs> gowns. Well, the, the ones with the cap sleeves at the beginning were kind of just like, Meh. but once she overcame that, She's wonderful gowns. Wonderful gowns. They, Nothing they, but hits. And they have to go to dance class and they're both very mad at each other. Mm -hmm. Here's where another question for me. Sure. <sighs> they're, you know, they, they're like really mad at each other. She steps on his foot, whatever. 90% of this dance scene is them twirling in a fucking circle. Why? There is lots of twirling. It's I mean, the there, there's a few other dance. moves. There, there's in. two, three steps that I'm like, when they, they twirl for like, I, it felt like 20 minutes, but I know it was much shorter. They weren't there for the dance lessons. They were <laughs> there for the moral support. Just like TJ, who showed up by herself and just kind of did this <laughs> across the dance floor. I want to talk about that in a second. Okay. But like legit, the two of them just twirled in the circle. But then they I made like, up in that twirl. So it's fine. Jackie, you are not seeing <laughs> the point. You keep on trying to say it's fine. It is not. Because at first I was like, oh, maybe one of them cannot dance. But I believe that she actually can dance in real life. And if I'm, I might be wrong, but I feel like she actually did take ballet or was a dancer in her younger years but him I don't think he had a problem dancing either because they had those two little moves and I was like oh mm -hmm. they can dance so what the fuck is with these twirls 
I want answers because it's horrible. Like y'all are y'all ain't doing shit. And maybe it's just white people shit. I don't know. But that I, ain't I don't have it didn't bother me. It bothered me a lot. Oh, <laughs> I don't think it ever bothered me before, but just rewatching it, I was like, why the fuck are they twirling for this whole scene? I was dizzy. <laughs> I didn't even notice the twirling. <laughs> now you won't ever forget it. This time you watch, you're gonna be like, "Damn!" Or maybe I twirling. was just like, "Oh, the twirling makes her dress flare out so beautifully." Jackie, this movie—they could have been selling coke during this movie, and you wouldn't care. You love it no, so much. That's a lie because part of the charm is this dance scene where they're <laughs> so angry at one another, but then like. They start to become comfortable with one another dancing mm, and kind of twirling. relax and kind of let shit go. Twirling. And then they're good. Maybe the <laughs> twirl was the key. <laughs> they were so dizzy. They couldn't be mad at each other anymore. And then this whole montage is to Dance With Me by Michael Buble. This movie introduced me to Michael Buble. And for that, I am thankful. I love <laughs> Michael Bublé. But yeah, they're the TJ. Mm-hmm. I felt this because I have been in so many situations where I am the only single person in a midst of couples. And I give her props for <laughs> literally dancing by herself. I'm surprised she didn't dance with the teacher at least. Yeah, she was just marching to the beat of her own drummer out on the dance floor. <laughs> so after dance lessons, it seems like the two of them are back on the same page with each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe don't they must have gone home and changed because now they're at, oh, they all go get ready to go. They're sitting on the little stoop or whatever, mm-hmm. kind of talking to each other and because they're about to get ready to go up to the country where the party's going to be, right? Right. Yeah. So they're getting ready to go to where the reception and the wedding are going to be held. And so they're going to be staying like in another, like, it seemed like a castle. Yeah. Because <laughs> it was castle Edward's, adjacent. Edward's got money. So Nick starts opening up a little bit. He says like, this is my first wedding. And she, she's surprised. And he's like, no, like I've had offers before. This is the first time I've said yes. And so she's kind of like, well, well, why me? And he's like, it was a tone in your voice to which she replies, desperation. (laughs) And he's like, no, it was hope. Like, I thought it was sadness. (laughs) (laughs) All of those. Mm. So then they head out to the country. Amy walks into their country house, whatever it is. And says, hello, Bambi, and hangs her purse on a stuffed deer head in the entryway. And Edward's just like, I just wish she'd stop doing that. Like, I do like this next scene when they go into their, Nick and Kat go into their room. Mm-hmm. And she's like, this is a big bed. And they lay in it. And Nick says, I, I think I'd miss you even if I never met you. Mm-hmm. Now that panty dropper whatever he was doing in the scene behind you i was like okay that we would have done it right a couple of things ken said what does that mean (laughs) and just before that kat says you know what really pisses me off you know everything about me and i know nothing about you almost like she's trying to pick a fight or see if he'll actually give some tidbits of himself which he does he he says he's allergic to fabric softener he majored in comparative literature at brown and he hates anchovies and then concludes with i think i would miss you even if i had never met you it just means that you're my lobster it means you're my person it means you are like we're meant to be together legit and, that's what it means kenneth well he also said why does he like her i don't see any redeeming qualities about that 
And I'm like, I think he just sees her like for who she is. Like he, he doesn't have any expectations of her. It's just, she's very quirky. She has high anxiety and he like digs at and is willing to work with her and meet her where she's at. She's a high achiever. She works, you know, she works really hard. Mm -hmm. She, she cares about her family. She will, even though her sister is a pain in the ass, she has no problem putting her sister first Mm -hmm. and on her special day. She babbles a lot, but at least she's, you know, she, she, she's open and like as much as she's anxiety ridden, Nick is very closed off. And that part of it could be that because of what he does, but it also could be that the reason he does what he does is so that he doesn't have to have intimate relationships with people because intimacy is not just about being physical, obviously, like he doesn't have to open up and he can be closed off and something about her openness to be this like unhinged vulnerable all the time right right that's probably a better (laughs) word but her ability to be this vulnerable is a a trait that he wishes that he probably had and it it actually makes him want to be more vulnerable with her which I think is what happened in the sex scene like he was very vulnerable with her because he didn't make her pay for it up yeah you know like so I think there's a lot about her that are redeemable the yeah. qualities nice qualities so after this scene is a picnic and they're playing cards and TJ keeps prodding like are you sure there's nothing wrong with him like <laughs> Nick's pretty perfect are you sure and Kat is kind of like in this blissful state with yeah. Nick now. So she's like, no. And then um, Edward's looking for Amy because he needs to feed her first before the rest of the party. And then Kat's like, have you guys ever to ha- had an honest to goodness fight? And he's like, why would he- why would we fight? i don't understand and he's like this makeup sex people talk about i guess that would be the only reason (laughs) and this is when kat and tj try to attack him and take the food because they know like it will get him in trouble and the and the dad actually says to nick you know why don't you go find amy and ulterior motives so when he goes to find amy he finds amy in in kind of like in an embrace or Jack is holding onto her arms. Oh, sorry. Yes, Jeffrey. Who the fuck? Who the hell is Jack? <laughs> Jack, Jack is You've the name. You've been doing so well <laughs> recently. Jack is the name of the actor who plays Edward. Oh, okay. So that's where I messed up. Anyways, it's Jeffrey is holding on to Amy. And Nick catches them and... He's like, your dad was looking, you know, for you or whatever. And 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 Nick keeps this whole thing to himself, mainly because he knows, like, he's not trying to ruin this wedding and he doesn't want to upset Kat. Like, it's not his place, legitimately. Exactly. Well, and it seems like Amy, after the, this scene is cut, Amy kind of fills him in on all of the drama. Right. Because when he walks back up to Kat, she's like, what's wrong? Are you okay? He's like, yeah, I'm fine. But you could tell like something's off. Right. And at this, I I feel like they change and they're now having dinner together because this is when Kat is in her black, beautiful black dress with the Mm -hmm. wonderful, see, having big boobs I don't get to wear dresses like these where you have like this beautiful, like your back is out because Mm -hmm. you need the support. I I don't have little titas to, to wear a dress like this without Mm -hmm. a bra. So I always think that they're super pretty. Um, I'm like, can't wear that. Can't wear that. Even though TJ has pretty nice knockers herself. And yeah, she when does. when they have the head night, she has like a halter type with like no back. I was like, oh, must they be were, nice. They were high and tight. They were. <laughs> 
Hey, what's up? It's always 25 years ago at Retro Late Fee. That's right. 25 years ago, Carol and I began recording our thoughts on TV and movies. And now you can catch us talking about 90210, Dawson's Creek, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, or whatever's popular in the theater that week. That's right. It's Retro Late Fee, the latest in entertainment from 25 years ago. Check it out. Just prior to dinner, dad is talking to Nick about Kat. This is right. where they're kind of in like a parlor. And dad keeps handing Nick hors d'oeuvres of anchovies. <laughs> so Nick kind of hides the first one. And then this is where dad tells him about how she, he met Kat and kind of like from then he was smitten like that was his kid. Yeah, he became a dad that moment, yeah. which was a really sweet story. So sweet. Yeah, And then like he offers Nick another anchovy. And so Nick says, I know this isn't going to make much sense, but can I have your permission to date your daughter? And the dad's like, I thought you already were and then nick eats the anchovy so he's like willing to do things that he doesn't even like to like impress cat's family at this my point. question is does the dad know has he known this whole time because he acts so. like he knows i think i i think so i and so the, i'm like always curious like how does he know this because well, he, he talked he mentions the, the article yeah but the article didn't have a picture of nick or anything so it's super weird just i don't know maybe the same person that cat because cat says the way that she found out about who nick really was was because she knew somebody who worked at the the magazine so Mm -hmm. i'm like maybe the person who works in the magazine is somebody the dad knows too maybe but it's just weird. But dad, dad is all knowing. He he figures that out. And like then they they're having dinner and they talk about the mom mentions how like both the girls don't like each other or mm-hmm. they used to be really close when they were little. And then and this is again where we get into the math not mathing because it seems like they're both fighting over a guy that's close in age. Yeah. So I I don't know. Dance. I, I just feel like maybe she wasn't 10 when he met her. Maybe he was like, maybe she I was like, t- maybe she was like two or three or something mm-hmm. because this whole premise has relies on the fact that the two girls are close in age. So they talk about <laughs> some kid on the block that they were fighting over or whatever, which is a great lead up to the fact that Kat goes downstairs to go get more wine and Jeffrey follows like I don't know if he was already in there or he follows her and like he's trying to tell Kat something and she's just like oh don't worry she thinks he's trying to apologize for Mm -hmm. being you know ending their relationship or whatever but she's such on a Nick high and in bliss that she doesn't even care and she just said I'm just so glad I'm like over you and me and at that time Nick is actually watching this happen and he can hear it so he's like very happy that she's finally like over dude Mm -hmm. and he leaves and then he jeffrey lays it on her that he not only slept with amy he tells her they slept together multiple times he said they went at it at like rabbits yes and that he's not only slept with her multiple times but he's in love with her on top of it like it was, I'm sure for her, that was like a gut punch. Yeah. And when she comes outside, she just looks devastated. And immediately TJ's like, she knows what's up. And then Amy sees it and is just like, and Amy, oh, when I tell you this bitch could catch these hands. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Could catch these hands. She doesn't even say, I'm sorry. Are you okay? Nothing. She's like, please don't tell. Yeah. So she prioritizes herself first. And then Nick goes to hug Kat and she feels like, okay, I'm in a safe space. But then fucking Amy again goes, I can't believe you told her. Clearly, bitch. I didn't. I didn't tell her. Like she came from the wines. She was fine when she went into the wine cellar. Right. 
I was sitting with you the whole time. Well, he did go inside. So maybe that's why. Yeah. So maybe I think that's why. And so now, now Kat realizes that Nick knows as well, but all of her vitriol and venom and anger and everything just goes towards Nick instead of your fucking sister, your fucking cousin, your fucking ex fiance. Yeah, because TJ knows too, and she's like, "Oh my god, you fu- you found out, or he's told you," and I'm like. And and Ken's like, why is she reacting like that? I'm like, because like she betrayal. feels like such an idiot. She's standing around with all of these people that are supposed to love her, and they're keeping this huge fucking secret from her. And it, like she just feels very alone in that situation. And so she just like she turns around and like walks away. Quite honestly, like. I would have probably talked to Nick to say like, what the hell? Cause mm-hmm. there, it's not the same level. Nick has no. only been here for two days. So how long could he have really known? Yeah. Right. He, he literally found out earlier that day. Right. And he didn't have time and like, it's not his place. Right. But TJ, her sister that like Jeffrey can go suck a dick. Yeah, my sister that whole relation like there's no way I would have stayed for that wedding there's nothing you could have said like and she was nice because I'm telling you it would have been a New Jersey housewife situation I would have been flipping that motherfucking table I would have I would have slept with Ed (laughs) well and poor Edward like you said he's such a golden retriever he just wants everyone to be happy and everyone's a good time. And he's so accommodating and he's so doting on Amy. He walks up and is like, what the fuck is going on? Mm-hmm. Essentially. And Jeffrey says. It's not time for him to catch. It's not a good time yeah, for him he, to actually catch on to anything. Yeah. And Edward's just like, okay, okay cool. <laughs> like, Unbothered unbothered like i guess this shit doesn't pertain to me i'll be over there (laughs) i i love that but like everybody would have been coming down with me there's no fucking i would i honestly i could not imagine my sisters ever doing something like that to me yeah i just couldn't like that is the worst kind of betrayal yeah and so nick goes after her and she, like like you said, just unleashes everything she's bottled up and is feeling about, like, everything this weekend on Nick. And so she's just saying very hurtful things. She said she calls him a liar. And then she says, I hired you to pre- pretend to be a boyfriend. $6,000 for a lie. And the only one to fall for it is me. Like, she's just so upset and so irate and she's just taking it out on nick and so he decides does she leave he leaves he He well she she runs away but like he goes he's going to a hotel like he goes to go get his stuff that's right and and edward sees him and he's like you know it's it's late he's like i'm just going to a hotel and he's like well the boathouse is empty first of all if i knew the like core of these shenanigans actually took place in that boat house. I ain't sleeping on those nasty shoes. <laughs> that nasty mattress. Okay. But he goes to the boat house or whatever. And Edward um, does say that he couldn't Nick couldn't be more perfect for Kat if she had picked you out of a catalog. He's not picking up on most things, but he picked no, up on that, which he is did. sweet. The next, you know, you can see Kat in her bed just distraught and sad i i really feel for her because i was we'll just yeah and and cat does have a discussion with amy and amy's like or cat's like don't worry tomorrow will be perfect oh amy says please don't tell edward i timing is everything on these things this cunt and and amy or cat's just like yeah, I'll stand up there. I'll smile. I'll say all the things. And you do need to time it right to trick him into marrying you. Mm. But for right now, I'm not going to pretend that it's okay. So before, like during the these scenes, 
I assume that Amy is cheating. She was not only like deceiving her sister and, and Jeffrey was cheating on his, her sister, but she was also cheating on Edward. But later we find out that it was like, they had all gone on trips and stuff like that, but she hadn't started dating Edward yet. Right. Like, it, it was, she started fooling around with Jeffrey while Kat and Jeffrey were engaged, but prior to Amy starting to date Edward. Yeah. Is the timeline for that. Right. So and I do. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, you're fine. The part I was, what I was going to talk about is we haven't gotten there yet. So, okay. So it's the next day home by Michael Buble is playing. Nick is trying to call to get a flight out, but there's nothing that day. Mom and Kat are getting their hair done. Ma and, and mom's like, are you sure you're okay? And Kat's like, yeah, sure. It's Amy's day. And mom's just kind of like, mm, that's us. But also doesn't really try to pry or yeah. anything. Doesn't care. Yeah. And then after like Kat's all ready for the wedding, she's sitting outside and dad finds her. He's been looking for her. And he says, why did you let him go? And, and Kat kind of responds, it's really complicated. And then dad says, you know, I read a really interesting article in the New York Times. And every woman has the exact love life she wants. And I refuse to believe this is what you want. You need to go get him. Sure. And, and dad kind of calls her out and is like, you've always been so worried about what other people think. What do you think? What do you want? Type thing. Right. And then we see Edward. Amy has summoned Edward to the bridal suite. He's in there like eyes I closed, trying to <laughs> not your, look. Your eyebrow thing. He's were doing really? the thing. Really bouncing. Dancing. Ah! Yeah. I will say, though, that despite the fact that I hate Amy... Her wedding dress and her looks in this movie were beautiful. Her wedding dress was gorgeous in this mm -hmm. in this scene. And her hair. Just had to. So um, she tells. Oh, yeah. Jeffrey. Amy tells Edward everything. Edward, Edward pissed. We get a flash to Kat. Almost called her Grace. Kat <laughs> is like trying to find nick nick now goes to the boathouse sees the envelope now labeled cat and on the back it says trust me it's all there which is what she said to him when she gave him the envelope and when edward finds out he this is where he clarifies he's like i knew you were seeing someone before we started dating but i just didn't think it would be jeffrey and then his first question really is like does cat know and is she okay which yeah Oh, so sweet. Oh, Edward, what a peach of a man. Yeah. And he's just like, he's been friend, friends with Kat for a really long time. Yeah. And so he goes out to find Jeffrey to like beat the beat shit out of him. Yeah. And like, it, it's, you realize like, this is not even have anything to do with him and Amy. Like, this is all because Jeffrey was such a dick to Kat. And how dare he? Yeah. Like, fuck everything up you he's know? a better sibling to cat than shit ass she amy is. also like yeah you went to go beat jeffrey's ass but did you go to amy and say like how could you do this to your sister would you mm -hmm. want to marry someone who could do that to their sister right i'd have been Blood. like bitch you for the you for the streets ho i'm out yeah there's no way so there's a whole Edward chasing Jeffrey scene. <laughs> and at the same time that he's chasing Jeffrey and Jeffrey is like, he is getting out of situation. Like he gets out of his jacket. He does all sorts of stuff. But at the same time, this is when Nick kind of drives by in, <laughs> in Edward's car and he's like, yeah. what the fuck's happening? You need some help, dude? <laughs> yeah. So I guess he, he knows at this point that Edward must know and, and he says, like, I must look like an idiot. So they pull over they and they have, like, a talk. And, and Edward does admit to putting Amy on a pedestal. And he's, like, she's been up there and wants to say, like, forever. And he's, like, since I put her up there, like, realizing that Amy is fallible. She is not above fucking up. Right. And he really, like, needs to assess, like, 
is this person for me? Spoiler, they get married anyway. But Amy do- does then actually have and like apologizes to Kat when Kat returns. I also like the color of her wedding dress because for her skin tone, it, it just like it doesn't wash her out, mm-hmm. but it it's it's nice. But I, I don't know. It's like a blue color. I don't know what exact beautiful. Yeah. I don't like and her then, hair though. Sorry. No. I agree. Kat's hair looks awful in this scene. And it, it it's almost like because they were in that like beauty parlor, it was like old ladies did her hair. Like this was the <laughs> style like in the 50s and we're just going to roll with that. And I think it was like curls but it drops. Mm-hmm. Dropped so it like didn't it just didn't look good. Yeah. And Nick does say to Edward the hardest thing is loving someone and having the courage to let them love you back. Yeah. And so, but he's speaking those words more for himself than Edward, I think, because Edward's already made his choice. And then he does say, and you get to spend the rest of your life having really great makeup sex. Sure. (laughs) So they get back to to the church. Nick finds Kat and says, I realized I'd rather fight with you than make love with anyone else. And that he is the new best man, so he's got to get in the church. Yeah. (laughs) I think that Nick would be a million times better brother-in-law than Jeffrey. A hundred percent. Yeah. So then the end of the movie is them dancing at the reception, and it has captions of, like, what happens with each group of people. Um. they're playing save the last dance for me by michael buble and tj finds out where woody got his nickname go tj don't have to dance solo anymore amy and edward found out what makeup sex is all about Hmm. nick quit his job and took cat on an actual date and he paid and ken's like but what is nick doing for money now he has a freaking degree from Brown. I'm sure That's he's going to be I fine. Like, he's a he white could... man in America. He'll be all right. I'm like, he had an art. Oh, like, I'm sure he could write articles or something. He seems pretty profound with his quotes. And then we see Jeffrey learns nothing. He's like literally getting out of the shower, has a towel wrapped around him, sees a pretty girl across the courtyard, drops his towel and starts doing pull-ups. Like, yeah, see. Men, I just, another, P, just, I think we've done this PSA before. Women do not find your penises to be pretty or like, unless you have something that will make a girl say, wowza, <laughs> do not, sh- don't share dick pics, do not. I just had this vision what? of... <laughs> of cat sitting on the toilet with like the like the little buns of Uh nick and her just have a bubble that says wowza Uh (laughs) (laughs) Uh, like don't don't do it no we don't want to see your dick you'll know when we want to see your dick yeah otherwise keep it in your pants yeah thank you it's not giving what they think it's giving yeah okay and that is the wedding date. <laughs> yeah. I do think it's funny that this movie originally was going to be called Something Borrowed, which is another kind of like book turned to movie mm-hmm. that came out. What is, oh, also Deborah Messing is allergic to real flowers. So they try to use, um, they try to use artificial Not flowers. To love Sorry, mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they tried to use artificial flowers as much as possible which is crazy because like when I think back of like this movie there's so many flowers so yeah. now I want to go back and rewatch it but before we get into the ratings make sure that you send us your hot takes or if you have questions or whatever you're following us on social media on Instagram Facebook TikTok Twitter YouTube at no more late fees 
All right, Jackie, we'll start with you. <laughs> I don't even think we need to ask, <laughs> but what is your today, your present day rating? I contemplated buying this movie on DVD only so I could listen to the commentary with Deborah Messing and watch the deleted scenes, but I do own it on iTunes. It never leaves my iPad. It is one of my <laughs> most favorite comfort movies. As soon as I get on an airplane, I turn it on to kind of get in my mellow mood to go to sleep it's it's so good so good and ken and i as we were watching it last night at different parts we would just turn to one another and be like this movie is so good we just i we both highly enjoy it (laughs) um it's a would buy it again for me i mean i like i said i own it on dvd i was i couldn't wait for us to watch it because it is what like the there are a few rom-coms in rotation that I'll watch just to like give me that. Yeah. So yeah. I'm really excited because that means that it's a no more late fees employee pick for 2023. Yeah. And I'm not even lying just to make you happy. Yeah. I let no. you like it. Yeah. It, it's such a good movie. Like it did. It has its, its questions. I had a lot of questions. <laughs> and it has its flaws, but I mean, like Ken said, like the, the you have a really supporting dad, supportive dad who knows like my daughter's dating an escort, but she seems happy. So, you know, and then, I mean, Edward is just who wouldn't want an Edward in their life. It You can tell that a woman wrote this movie yes. because all of the characters are fully fleshed out. Yes. And uh, yeah. They're multidimensional too. So if you have any feedback about this movie, maybe you agree with Danielle, it was one too many twirls in the dance scene. <laughs> Hit us up at our quick drop 909-601-NMLF, 909-601-6653. Twat us at the Twitters or leave a voicemail on our Anchor FM account. Are, are people from England, please let us know. What was your question, Danielle? What's that little door? Oh, yes. The little door in the pub. What is its function? Right. We'd love to hear from you. And you could be featured on a future episode. And join us next week as our dear friend Andrew joins us for Kung Pao. Enter the fist. (laughs) Oh, it's going to be an interesting episode. I don't even know what to think. Like, I was literally telling my brother, like, we have to watch Kung Pao. And he goes... Is that the one where the cow fights the man? I was like, yes, yes, it is. So, Andrew, this is how much we love you because Kung Pao would not have even registered on our rotation of movies. I always get it confused with there's a Kung Fu Hustle, I think, or something. There's like another movie. So I don't know which one we're seeing, but I think the other one I think would is actually I would be like, I'm thinking that it's the other one that I'm thinking in my head. And that one actually seems really entertaining because there's a woman with rollers and slippers that she like kicks off and like messes people up with. But I don't think it's the same movie. So anywho, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. (laughs) Shout out, Andrew. (laughs) (laughs) And as always, be kind and rewind.